Today's episode is sponsored by Zondervan Publishers. Zondervan is offering the Trace the Themes Bible Study. Trace the Themes is a free Bible study authored by uh, Pastor Spence Shelton, and it will help you trace the themes of Scripture as they unfold from Genesis to Revelation. This is a six-part study perfect for small groups, family devotions, or individual use. You can learn more at tracethethemes.com. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. What's going on? You know, nothing. Busy times, busy days. Busy days. Busy days. And uh, we're, we're basically, we're... In the middle of this of a, of a busy week, oh, and yeah. we we were meeting very quickly to record a couple of episodes, exactly. and then blast off, and then that's it. Bl- yeah, blast <laughs> off. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> well, what else do we do? I don't know. Who says it's blast off? We're gonna blast off. We're gonna blast off. We're gonna bail. We're... What? We're gonna bail. That's another way. We're gonna say we just bail. We're gonna get out of here. You don't listen. You don't you, pick on the. Just don't. You don't have to pick on the way that I talk about uh, stuff. Uh, uh, and by you, the way, let me just say this. Why are you trying stop to using, sound young? Stop using my likeness. Okay. Oh. Stop. <laughs> Stop using my leg. Every time I fa- every time now I FaceTime Jimmy, mm-hmm. he's thinking he picks up. Or if he FaceTime you, you, you FaceTime me. I don't yeah. really FaceTime you. When Jimmy FaceTimes me, yep. uh, I answer and I'm looking at myself because he's got the <laughs> iPhone X and he's created this like face of me. So I'm talking to myself. I make a I made a Joe Moji. Yeah, and it doesn't even e Joe. Okay, it looks no, it's yeah, Ejoji. Ejoji. Yeah, it looks like me. Like yours looks like you, yeah. but you don't know how to talk like me. You, you make no. me sound like Grover when you do it. Uh-uh. Oh, go ahead, impersonate me. Okay. Go ahead. No, my not name's a- Joe. <laughs> I'm sense. not happy right now. <laughs> Jen's gone. I don't know how to cook. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying the right things, but you you make me sound like uh, somebody. <laughs> on- no, that's not how I. No, because like you know how he's like throw his arm. That's no, you. you got that's, that's you. That's right, but no, not the voice. No, it's you. the voice. Is not you're right. such a complainer. <laughs> okay. So fine. Everybody can chime in. Which which uh which puppet or Muppet. Or Sesame Street character, am I? You have to pick okay, one. Okay, it's obviously Oscar, Oscar the, Grouch. the Grouch. Okay, yeah, that, you... okay so there you go. I, I don't sound like Grover, though. That doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to sit and go, eh, eh. Okay, that's better. Oh, my name's Joe. you got to come up with a better way of doing my voice. Nobody cares <laughs> about this. You know, what, you know all of this? You know what all this does to me? What's that? What does it do? It makes me spiritually cool, cold, Jimmy. Oh, really? It makes me feel complacent mm. and uh, unmotivated. I feel like oftentimes you're... You're hot, and then you're cold. I mean, you're yes, and then you're no. You're in, and then you're out. You're up, and then you're down. That that sounds like you. You're wrong when it's right. It's black and it's white. We. I'm not going to sing the rest I of it. I'm not going to go and talk any, about that. I, I have no idea what song that is. What are you? What doing? are you talking about? We're talking about complacency. No, okay, and, what song and are you? Feeling just, hot and you cold. You are definitely quoting to... some cheesy song I, no, that I've not. never no, heard I'm before. Not. I'm, I'm reading from uh, mm-hmm. the book of Perry, a uh, Katy Perry. Katy. What song is that? Huh? Hot and Cold. That's the name of the song is Hot and Cold? Yeah, I, feel, I figured it was perfect for this episode. Oh my gosh. I have never. Oh, okay. don't even pretend, yeah. Little Miss. What? Uh, uh, okay, I like Taylor that. Taylor Swift. I like that. I do like that. Like, you're going to hear me roar. That's all mm-hmm. right. I don't know the name of it. Roar, is that the song? I don't know. Roar! <laughs> <laughs> you're going to hear me roar! <laughs> that's all right. Uh, that's an all right song. I'll do that one. Um, all right, so today, uh, Jimmy and I thought we would talk about... Uh, spiritual complacency. Yep. I've been thinking a lot about this uh, personally um, because we all go through these times when you know we're feeling a little cold or complacent or yeah. unmotivated. When you know we open up the Word and it, 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 we just don't feel like we're getting anything out of it. Mm. Like there are those times when spiritually things are flat. And recently, I've had a number of different people tell me that about them about themselves personally. Like I just I really feel you know they'll say cold. Yeah. Um, and so as I've been you know, doing a lot of personal work in my own life, trying to figure a few things out mm-hmm. about myself, uh, I started thinking about different ways in which you know, we can um, sort of reignite spiritual passion. Now, yeah. Of course, this isn't something – you can't make yourself on fire spiritually, right? I mean, it's like you, you, can't well, manu- yeah. you can't manufacture personal revival. Well, I mean, not according to Benny Hinn and others. I mean, I feel like uh, there's a way that we could fan it to flame – 
the fire of the Lord within the life of the believer, uh, as long as they're waving their coat at us, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe fan it with some dollars. Yeah, that's, that's how you fan it into flame <laughs> yeah. with dollars. dollars. Actually, no, no. They want $10, $10 $20. They don't want no dollar. Yeah, they gotta, you got to have those, those Creflo dollars. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, we... So we're not, we're not, I don't want to suggest that we can manufacture mm-hmm. personal revival, but there, there, but the, the reality is, um, if we're, if we're feeling spiritually cold, the way that I've been thinking about it is, yeah. and I know we, we both have talked about this before, Jimmy, that when we're backsliding or getting spiritually cold before that, what's happening is there is some kind of a disruption in our communion with God. Oh yeah. Right. So there's this, that intimacy, that, uh, that freshness, that the transparency, uh, right. This sort of like experiential relationship yeah. that's supposed to flourish with God through Jesus Christ, that is being interrupted. And and it has an effect. It has an effect on our on our outlook, on our mm-hmm. attitude, and and even on our faith. Right, right. And it and so you don't want to be led by your feelings or by no. your experiences, but those things are important components of, of of healthy faith. Which is funny because you're cold hearted and like you're you're very stoic. Well, that's towards people, yes, but not not no. towards God. No, no, no. So wait, wait, wait. When it's just you and the Lord. I, give me just give me an example. Just give me, all right. So, um, how, me, how would you me, like it? Okay, how many times have you seen me cry? Uh, twice. Never. No, that's not true. Never. Twice. Never. Twice. Name one time you've seen me cry. One, I made you laugh. Okay, that bit. doesn't count. Okay. Secondly, uh, Steve was moving back, and I said, "Hey, Joe, I got I got to oh, talk stop. to you about." <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> The only time I I, uh, I get emotional, basically, there's in realist, realistically, there's two. Um, when I'm super like happy for people getting married and having babies, mm-hmm. I get a little misty. Uh, but then, in terms of you know the grace of God in light of my yeah. sin, that's a pretty emotional thing. Or the idea that the fofo might move. Uh, well, that's just anger, though. That's that, tears that, of rage. That, that's tears. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, uh, you, that's man, not. you've got a wide range yeah. of tears. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was, it, it you're was, deeper than all of us. That, well, you know. Yeah, you know what? You're deeper than all. If your if your tears are angry tears, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You are deeper than the well, rest of I, us. I only function in the emotion of anger. That's so I've got it. it manifests itself with laughter, uh-huh. with tears, uh-huh. right? With the silence sometimes, <laughs> right? There's all kinds <laughs> That's of, it. That's yeah. all. Okay. All right. So what, what, when it comes down to it, what we're what we're gonna suggest today is that our communion with God ultimately flourishes when we understand the reality of our sin. Yeah. And the reality of God's grace. And when we begin to lose sight of one or the other of these things, there is a, a disruption. Yeah. Now, um, now, this is actually like, like Joe, when we're talking about these things, we're talking about things that require right. some self-examination. Mm-hmm. I, I think oftentimes we miss that as believers. At least I do. Mm-hmm. As I go through my day-to-day, uh, at whether it's at work or at home, there's that that aspect of self-examination that um, that often is missing. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, but what are we doing when we, you say self-examination? Explain that to, to everyone. Yeah. Um, why, I guess, uh, why am I reacting or feeling the way I am? I guess is, is kind of what it is. Like, um, so, I, okay, here's an example. I, I used to get really defensive and I oftentimes, not often, I shouldn't say like that, but sometimes I still get defensive. All Joe the knows, time. Stop it. All, All the, the time. time. Yeah. Every other All time. All the time. <laughs> um, I'll get defensive. And uh, I would just get angry, defensive, wouldn't even think about it again, uh, and just chalk the person up as something's wrong, right? Uh, now, now, if I start feeling defensive, I'll start to ask the question like, okay, what's going on here? Like, right. why am I feeling this? How is my pride hurt? How is my, you know, what's, you know, like that kind of stuff. But I also examine things like um, – how how is my communion with God? Like, am I? We've talked about in our ransom method. You know, where's my meditating at? Right. Right. Where's my? Um, as I'm walking throughout the day, am I reflecting upon the goodness of God? Am I trusting in the goodness of God? Am I depending upon the grace of God? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, self examination. I think oftentimes happens uh, for believers in the morning because they it's kind of part of that quiet time, right? Right. Um, but I'm talking about like throughout the day and into the evening, how, cause I'm, I'm messing up all day already. Right. So how, how am I examining why I said, or how I'm feeling the way I'm feeling? Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's helpful. And you're actually hitting up on the deeper levels of self-examination, right? Like I'm a deep guy. You're this super way, deep. This it. What? Yeah. You're super deep. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Man. That's well, you know. 
Well, no, what yeah. do you mean? What, uh, you know. No, you just gave me a comma. Okay, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I'm saying like you're super deep. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I, I'm like, like a, I'm like I, a well. You know, yeah. it goes right down in there, and I can. Yeah, yeah thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's dry, but you know, it's deep. No. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a deep well. It's, it ain't nothing in there. There's a bunch of puppies that fell down the hole. What Bones the, are. Who says Wait, that? what? Oh, I don't know. Have you examined why you? <laughs> oh, but I have. I know why. All right, so yeah, and I think like you know, at a deep level, that's what you're talking about. And, mm-hmm. and to, to, but you can't get there until you start examining like some really basic things, right? Like what what is happening in my life? What are the sins that are yeah, that's good, pro- yeah. you know that are causing me trouble? And then you go, okay, so I'm being angry. Mm-hmm. Why am I getting angry? You're, you're getting yeah, see, that, I just get I go right past that. Well, you're advanced. I'm advanced. You're an advanced sinner. Yeah, no, no, you're, no. You're, you're, you're deep. <laughs> I know I'm sinning. Now I'm trying to figure out why am I yeah, sinning. Like, what is my problem? <laughs> so I, I think that um, I think you're right. I think when we're talking about like, well, how do we how do we actually go about this? You know, we in self examination, we have to consider our sins. Yeah. Right. We have to try to unpack what's happening, trace those roots down, like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then we always have to get back to a gospel meditation. Absolutely. Um, I read a tweet today. It was actually I I I, I can't remember. Um, I, I can't find it right now, but we're in the middle of this conversation. But she was quoting Luther, and I had not heard this quote before. And I feel like I've heard a lot of Luther quotes, mm-hmm. and maybe it could be one of those you know things. But maybe so, he said, so, or maybe yeah. he didn't. Right. So are you kind of upset that you didn't know about it? Is this, no, no, because it is was this so your good. Pride? No, no, oh, it was okay. awesome. It was awesome. All right, it was uh, our at R Dub Hall on Twitter. That's our friend Rick. He came to the conference. We met him and his wife. Oh like, yeah, yeah, like this, yeah Earlier this year from Texas. Right, right. So um, homeboy quotes Martin Luther. Uh, as this, when I look at myself, I don't see how I can be saved. But when I look at Jesus, I don't see how I can be lost. Ooh. Yeah. That's powerful. I don't know if Luther actually said that, mm-hmm. but that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty sure I said that. <laughs> Is that a fofo? I, I think that's a fofo. I think I said that last year's conference. Rick, you got to really apply it correctly when you're... Uh, uh, apply directly to the forehead? Is that like what you're talking no, about? No, no. Oh, I mean, okay. like, you got to give credit where credit's due. Oh, yeah, due. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Recite your sources. Recite. Yeah. That's it, yeah. So, um, so we, we've got to go, uh, from not just an examination of our sins, yep. but to the gospel meditation. And so to do that today, what we're going to look at are what's commonly called. Oh, the seven deadly sins. Right. Because Joe's so Catholic. Yeah, man. Get my Catholic on today. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we're not, we're not suggesting that, uh, what Roman Catholic theologians have written about these things are, uh, are significant for you or that they are altogether wrong. We're not even dealing with that stuff. We just no, want to. Yeah, but. Believe it all. Continue. <laughs> but what we do want to do is we want to talk about these sin, these sins, these seven yeah. sins, because they are common to all people, and they are genuinely, uh, you know, these are these are serious problems that can wreak havoc in our lives. And if we want to do some self examination, sometimes we don't know where to start. Yeah. So one of the ways that we can start is by looking at these particular sins. Yeah. And then looking at ourselves. That's right. right. And, I, and the best way to do that, I think, is watching Seven. And as you watch Seven, the made for TV, like like TV edit Seven. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm talking Brad Pitt. Yeah, I'm yeah. Talking, I mean, but like, the, what's in the box? Like, yeah. So, um, eh, you know, if if you're if you're not 18, uh, <laughs> don't, don't go don't watch, watch it. Don't watch that movie. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, Jimmy, let's. Uh, what we'll do is, why don't we just look at each one simply, and right. we'll reflect on some passages of scripture that address address these sins. Uh, and in order, typically, traditionally, the first sin that's listed is pride. Mm-hmm. Now, when you think about pride. Like, how would you explain what, what pride is to somebody? How would you define it? I think making much of ourselves uh, and put the putting down of others. I think there's I think there's two things here. It's it's boasting of oneself at the same time looking down mm-hmm. upon those around you. I think that's good because I think we think that we can simply have a really good view of ourselves without it impacting how we view others. That's it. But, but I if, think it's both. I think it's absolutely. You can't have an unrealistic inflated view of yourself without, without deflating the other. Right. Exactly. Yeah. See, fofoism, Rick. Yeah. See? Say, when you tweet that one, Rick, it's me. That's right. Don't be. And Martin Luther didn't write that. John Calvin. <laughs> said that one. All right. So, um, for example, we, we know uh, some like so many passages in Scripture that deal with the sin of pride. Um, yeah, Proverbs, I, oh, pride. I was going to say Galatians six three, and that's kind of where I'm really thinking about this. For if anyone thinks he is something yeah. when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Yeah. Right. And so that's just it. The really boasting of oneself mm-hmm. is is a deception uh, that you're you're. My dad used to tell me as a kid, like, man, the worst. Shut thing up, you dummy. Do, no, no I didn't that. say that. <laughs> Worst thing you do. Well, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of w- more horrible things I could do. But he's like, man, what's really messed up is when people start believing their own lies. 
Right? Yeah. That's that's really messed up. You can lie to it's others. Dangerous, you can, yeah. When you start lying to yourself and believing that, yeah. then you messed up. And that's what pride is, right? Because it, it, it's not like somebody has tricked you as much as it is. Like they might have suggested something, but you have to you have to choose to believe that hype. To oh, believe yeah, your own yeah. hype. So, yeah, I was, there's a bunch of Proverbs, right? When pride comes, then comes disgrace uh, from Proverbs 11. Two or Proverbs sixteen eighteen, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit mm-hmm. before a fall. Like pride will ruin you. It is a sin that will give birth to other sins. It's That's always right. called by people a root sin that gives birth to fruit sins. So that you know, when you can trace your sins and see the connection back to pride, you can make greater work of putting those those sins to death. One of my favorite uh, Proverbs is Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil, yeah. pride, arrogance, and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. So like to fear God, yeah. to properly understand God is to hate pride. That's right. And That's right. this is something that we oftentimes see in ourselves. So how is pride manifested? Like this is what you should do when you're mm-hmm. thinking about pride. Like, okay, so here's what pride is, an inflated view of itself. Now, what are some ways in which it gets manifested that I might see in in my own life? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one of the ways for me is when I think I deserve something more than somebody else. Mm. So let's just say you're in your your vocation or or yep. and uh, you get passed over for yep. a promotion. You mm-hmm. think to yourself, "Well, hold, why is that person? That person mm-hmm. is not qualified. I'm qualified." Then you start to tell yourself, "Oh, it has to be." Some politics. I'm, right. I'm just too. I'm. I'm just the straight talk express. That's yeah. why I can't get in there. You just they, keep. You're too real. I'm too you real. They real. can't handle me. They no. can't handle me. And I love when people do that. Yeah. When people get, I like they get passed over or something like that, or they don't get what they think they want. All of a sudden, it's like, no, no. They knew they couldn't handle me. Yeah. I'm too big for them. <laughs> that right there, you should be thinking to yourself, oh, okay, yeah, I'm a pretty prideful person. Yeah, I think about when I think about pride and how it manifests itself. I think about um, <laughs> driving. I think about anger. Mm. Like it took me forever, but I, I figured out years ago that um, the reason I get angry when I drive is because I'm proud. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I, I just wouldn't have thought about it that way. And but the, the spirit used the scripture and a few other brothers in my life to make that really clear. Pride manifests itself in self righteous yeah. anger. Yeah. And uh, so you've got this sense of entitlement, like you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got anger. And in fact. Pride can manifest itself in all of these other sins that we're going to be talking about. Yeah, like it's absolutely. Kind of the fountain of all of these sins. Now, I, I think Martin Luther once said that. Uh, uh, actually, I don't remember if Luther actually said it. Now that I think of it, I've heard it, but I don't know if it's actual Lutherism. Okay, he talked about like the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, the first one being. Go ahead. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking, reading something while you said that. Sorry. First commandment. I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you yeah. should have no other gods before. Exactly. Right. And yeah. so like pride is putting yourself on that throne. Right. And so saying, you know, the rest of them, kind of like this, the rest of the Ten Commandments. They'll all fall. Oh, they'll all fall because of pride. Yeah. You know? Then did I get the first commandment right? Was I right on that one? Did you, I get you were it? right. I, my I, second I, attempt was good? Your second okay. attempt was good. Uh, you got it right there. Uh, uh, I don't know the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Love the Lord your God. <laughs> the first commandment, uh, keep it real. Uh, I don't know, what is it? Uh, the first. Uh, there's 10 of them. I don't know. They're all mixed up. All right. I just kind of threw that at you. I was like, huh? I know the ticket commandment. Yeah, I know. Apparently, That's why I was uh, like, but apparently when the nah, pressure's on, I don't. Uh, you don't want me on a game show. Um, okay, so... So here's the thing. If, if pride is the problem, if yeah. pride is the yeah. vice, then what is the virtue? Yeah, I mean, I think the, I, in a lot of ways, the, the opposite of that then uh, is humility. Right, right. Right? And, uh, many, and many of the passages of Scripture that condemn pride in that same mm-hmm. breath will extol the virtue of humility, like James 4, 6. Um, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Or in Luke 14, 11, we're going through the Gospel of Luke at yeah, church. Yeah. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Or Proverbs 22, 4, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Yeah, Matthew 23, 12, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. I, yeah, I read that in Luke 14. No, no, but I, 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 like the same the, thing. I like the way Matthew yeah, says they, it. Yeah, they use the same says, source. No, no. It's probably Mark. No, no, you know, it's okay, Matthew though. said it better. The same Matthew thing. said right. it better. That's worse than my messing up the Ten no, Commandments. Not. I think it's Good worse. Good job, Matthew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep it real with my homeboy, Matt. All right, so uh, 1 Peter 5, 6. <laughs> Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he might exalt you. Mm-hmm. Um, Colossians 3.12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and 
patience. So, I mean, we get it, right? Humility is, and if you're saying that pride is the is this inflated, unrealistic view yeah. of ourselves, thinking of ourselves as higher than others, then humility is seeing ourselves for who we really are that's it. before the that, face of God and before others. That's really important because I think uh, oftentimes we look at humility as uh like lo- like lowering ourselves. I know you know, we talk. He must decrease. I must. Or yeah, he must increase. I must decrease. Right. Yeah. But I think we go with this false sense of humility. This mm-hmm. like this. How, how would you say it? It's like a self deprecating. Yeah. Like it's like yeah. When you when you when you come off, either, whether you legitimately believe this or don't legitimately believe it, but just say it. Either way, it's wrong. Where you just make yourself to be a complete loser, yeah, of no value, of of no use. Exactly. Like, like think emo, think Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, you know. geez. like don't make don't what. I'm just saying. Don't poke the emo kids, okay? Just, they what? are keyboard warriors, and they will come after us. <laughs> they will, but I'm just saying. Okay, Brian Malcolm loves Brian, I know, the hey, Smashing Pumpkins. Exactly. Mm, we're going to smash some pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> so keep it, the world's so mean. Oh, look at this. I'm so angry. I can mm. smash some pumpkins this Halloween. <laughs> I'm going to fight against this machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to fight. I'm going to rage. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do like I do like a couple of rage. Uh, uh, do you really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some. There's, but either there's way, like what I'm saying is like that that fakeness or that yeah. that even like you said, whether it's real or not, it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate because it's it. not a realistic view. Correct. You're a person made in God's image. Correct. He loves you and he can use you. Um, and that's denigrating the image of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, and and it, we we're, we don't have time to explore the gospel for each one of these things, but we want to remind you guys that yeah. as we're looking at these things, as we're examining ourselves, trying to see if there is any hurtful way in us, right? Like David says, um, we have to make sure that we're seeing this issue of pride, mm-hmm. this problem of pride, and the need for humility in light of the gospel. That's right. Right. So when when we go to the gospel, um, what are we thinking about? We're, we're thinking about the fact that it is it is Jesus Christ who humbled himself yes. by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Yeah. That in his humbling of himself, he overcomes our pride. He saves us from our pride through his humility. Mm. And then in his humility, he shows us the better way. And exalts us. Yes. Right? So that because so we can be number one. No. No. <laughs> so that no. we could be restored in relationship back to right. our father. Right, exactly. Love it. Okay. Oh, so second uh, uh greed. Deadly sin. Greed. Greed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Joe. Big corporations. Wh- oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead. First Timothy six ten. For the what? love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Oh, see that? The love of money. Here's no, 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 money no, 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 is no, the root no, of all evil. That's what it says. No, no, no. It says for the love of that money. money is evil. That's what the Bible says, right? <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and give me? <laughs> well, I hate it when people misquote this. So I know, much. like, oh, money is so bad. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Feel the burn. Okay, so um, <laughs> yeah, but he ain't feeling it. He making money. Oh, hey, he got money. He got money. He got, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it he, must be nice to tell us all to, to not have money <laughs> when you've got money. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. So, yeah, I mean, greed is essentially... Like, how a, would you define it? It is a, mm, a, a longing, a, a dissatisfaction... I like that. That's with, good. ...with what you have yes. and a longing for what you... Others have. Well, yeah, that's coveting. I, I feel like, you know, greed is the... Is, 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 a discontent with what you have and a and a, and a and an insatiable desire for more than you need. Okay, that's gonna say. So it's not. I don't think it's wrong to to desire more mm-hmm. than you may need minimalistically, but this insatiable desire for more than you need and that combined with a dissatisfaction, like over I, what you I have. can't be content right now yeah. because I don't have more. Mm. I think it's I think it's a bit more complicated than just wanting more than you have. So I would say it is a. This is just how I'm coming up with it. Yeah, yeah. That it is a spot. dissatisfaction yeah. with what you have and an insatiable longing for uh, more than you need. I think that might be a, a good way to talk about it. And uh, you read a really good passage of scripture in First Timothy six. So as we begin to think about this and and how it might manifest itself in our lives, you know, it, it singles out this idea of the love of money. It's not yeah. money that's the root of all evil. Money is not evil, but the love of yeah. money. I mean, even in Hebrews 13, keep your life free from the mm. love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So here, it, it, this to me is a, is a great passage about it, right? About the, don't be free from the love of money. Mm. Be content with yep. what you have. Yep. And that because why? Yes. Because the Lord is with you and will take care of you and uh, and will sustain you yeah, with all some, that you need. There's some good 
simple theological math going on right there mm-hmm. right, that we can do. So, um, the, the simple kind. That's all I want. Th- that's all I can do. Yeah, please round up, though, because so, I want more. Yeah, no, yeah always. It's that greed talking. <laughs> so we have, um, it's the love of money, right? So maybe when we're talking about greed, we need to incorporate this idea of, well, it is, a, it is uh, an overvaluing of yeah. the things of this world. Uh, combined with this insatiable desire for more and more and more. Mm. So it's it's not money. It's not the need for money. It's not the use of money. It's not the abundance of money. It is the love of money that is the problem. So it's a heart issue. Yeah. It's not a bank issue. That's right. All right. So greed is a heart issue. And he says instead of this idea of greed, you ought to be what? Content. content right? So contentment is the virtue that combats greed. And so... How do we find contentment? Do you find contentment after you've hit a certain level uh, financially? Do you find contentment as long as you have? Like, can you, can you, are you going to be legitimately discontent until you have your mortgage paid off? Or, uh, or are you going to be discontent when you can't make your bills? Or like, how is it that we can find contentment according to that passage? Oh, what was that? That's the lawn mowing guy, and it's nighttime. <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind if he starts <laughs> mowing with a flashlight. Oh, gosh. I'm going to lose my I mind. Seriously... Let's get to wrath. I ser- <laughs> oh, stinking. All right, so according to Hebrews. According to Hebrews, yep. So uh, what, what, uh, you can be content with what you have. Yep. For because I will never leave you nor forsake you. So trusting in the goodness of God in the life of the individual. Right. So, I mean, this is – that's really profound. The author of Hebrews, not Paul, the author of Hebrews <laughs> says that we can be content with what we have, whether it's a little or a lot. Correct. Not because of any circumstances, but because of God. Mm-hmm. That's, listen, this should be convicting for all of us when oh, it comes yeah. down to greed and contentment. Oh, yeah. All right. So when you're examining yourself to see like, okay, so are, is there any hurtful way in me? There's, you know, what, what, what about pride? What about greed? Um, what about lust? Right, like this mm. word, this word lust is the third deadly sin. Really, the word itself, like the, the Greek word, uh, it can just mean um, powerful desire, longing, mm. but it is almost always associated with negative um, ideas. Uh, it's almost always associated with sin. So technically, you could say I lust for the glory of God, but because of the predominant way in which it is used, we don't do that. No, no, don't, because, don't uh, do that. Don't it do is, that. Uh, there are some there are some authors with gold dust that might you know actually take that in a pretty literal way. Mm. Uh, we don't do that. No, we would no. say that it's better to just use it consistently with the way it is mostly used in Scripture. So, um, Jimmy, how would you define lust to somebody? Yeah, I, mean, I think it would be, uh, I'm looking at First John. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride in possessions uh, is not from the Father, but it is from the world. So this lust is when you you see something, you desire something, you um, you long for it. I think that's kind of what we've been talking about, right? Is that when, that, when, it, when what you are looking at captures your heart and that desire is not rooted in... Uh, in your trust and faith in God, mm-hmm. but it is rooted in your established place or desired established place in the world. Right, right. I think that's good because in a general sense, lust can be applied to all kinds mm-hmm. of things. Um, most of the time we associate it with sexual sin. Yeah. So if we're going to say that, you know, lust is this strong desire, it should be, we should see it as it's a strong desire for that which you're really not supposed to have, right? If, oh, even yeah, if it's, yeah, even yeah, yeah. if it's just not right now. You know what I mean? So, so then would that be kind of similar to, I know we, we touched on coveting. Mm-hmm. So is there kind of a, a similarity I think there's overlap here? Yeah. between a lot of these sins, greed and lust yeah. and, and coveting. Yeah, I think there is a, a, a use like a Venn diagram. You could probably come up with something pretty good that explains mm-hmm. how they break down and how they're different and how they're similar. All right, look at the show notes. Joe will have that. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, he's not, guys. Don't go look. <laughs> Brian, Brian would correct it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I'd have to put his up. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's this, you know, because people talk, we talk about a lust for power, for example. Exactly, right? yeah. So it, it is. <laughs> Blood lust. So lust is a self-serving desire. It's a selfish desire mm-hmm. that has no regard for other people. And um, so like you know, a number of, of passages of Scripture, Scripture frequently warns us to, to, to flee from, from these things, right? Mm-hmm. To, um, to uh, like Galatians 5, 16, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Um, we've got uh, Colossians 3, 5, put to death what is earthly among you, sexual immorality and 
impurity, passion, yeah. evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Um, there, there is a, there are a number of ways that lust manifests itself in our hearts. And when we, when we talk about this sin, Jimmy, what is it about this sin that is appealing? Why, why do we, why do we indulge in this sin? Mm. Why, what is it that makes that makes it look good to us? Like, okay, I'm going to actually play with this sin, whereas you might think like, well, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go down the the, the thoughts of punching somebody in the face. Uh, at least not in the sense that I would actually pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. But we we will in, really indulge this this heart sin. What what what's appealing? I think part of it is is pride. I know they're all mm-hmm. connected, but I think and greed obviously. But um, I think part of it's because of of status. Right? Is we lust for power. We lust like the the uh, uh, you're talking about sexual sins, right? Yeah. Like. We lust for this place of dominance and control over uh, our own lives and sometimes lives of others. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, I think that's true. And um, when when I'm thinking about lust and, and like what it is, is because it is so focused on self satisfaction. Because it like to to lust, it it's feeding a feel good moment, right? Mm. Like when you're. The desire itself feels good, you know, a sense of satisfaction, right? Yeah, it's like we we want that. We want like so. It's something that we we shouldn't have right now. Yeah, Um, we're impatient for. Not only are we impatient for the possibility, uh, we're we uh, disregard that we might never have it. Right, right. And the only way to really lust is to is to focus on this desire for this thing or this person or the status separated from God entirely. So Mm -hmm. it is, it's purely selfish. It's purely worldly. And I think the reason it is appealing is because of, um, I think another reason, I think a reason why this particular sin is so appealing is because it means I do not have to restrain my heart. I like, yes. I just get to, I just, I'm just going for it. I, I, it, it's, does it's entitlement. It's, it's all of that stuff. And I'm just going to let loose and, and drink it in, in my mind, um, in my thoughts, maybe even in my planning. And so the opposite then of lust, I think is self-control. Oh yeah. I mean, and one of the passages I, I really, uh, co- that's really convicting for me mm-hmm. when it comes to self-control is I think of, uh, Proverbs 25, Ooh. a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Ooh. There's yeah. no boundaries. And like the idea behind this, the the walls is safety. Right. You, you're safe right. within here. Build the wall. Build the wall. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, no, listen, all I'm trying to get at is you need the wall towards the south and <laughs> of, of, of your city. Right. And it should be funded. And, you know, you're you paid you're, for by sin. Is that how you're. What, no, how no. You? I, I'm just saying that I think the government needs to do something and act. For the safety of of the city, okay. Uh, <laughs> but no, you it's know, a what? power. It's a it's powerful, powerful picture. Image. It's yeah. a powerful picture there because once you once a city has no walls or you, it, yeah. an individual has no self control, then everything no and anything exactly right. And it's not as if like you know, self control is 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 a fruit of the spirit. It's a part of the fruit of the spirit, right? That's what I think about as Galatians, right? Mm. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and it ends on self-control. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a sign of, of the spirit's work in us. It yeah. is a fruit of salvation. And so we have a lot to be concerned about if there is no self-control in our lives. Yeah. Now, listen, in certain areas of my life, I can be pretty self-controlled, but there are some areas of my life where I, it's self-control just goes out the window, like um, donuts, if it's a yeah. good, if, if, if it's a box, don't not Dunkin', yeah. it's just like a box of good yeah. donuts. Donuts make you go nuts. So, yes, absolutely. That's really good. Uh, I can't. There, there's no self control. So, uh, like, um, I don't know the the NIV Biblical Study Bible. I just gotta have it. <laughs> you gotta I have just, it. I just gotta have it. Um, and not only their Biblical Study Bible, actually, they they've put out this free Bible study. Zondervan is our sponsor for this episode, and they have released a Trace the Themes Bible study that um, helps you to trace the biblical themes as they're progressively revealed in Scripture. And uh, really what it does is it unpacks six themes of Scripture as they unfold in the Bible, the Word of God, the presence of God, Mm. the people of God, redemption, holiness, and mission. And it's all for free. The videos, the study guides, 
all of it. It's perfect for small groups and family devotions, and it's free. All you got to do is head over to start your uh, is to head over to trace the themes dot com. You can start there, and it's a uh, free six week, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, six it, week it, Bible it, study? yeah, that's right. Six themes, six weeks, and you just listen. This is if you don't know what to do. Maybe, like a lot of you guys are in like churches that don't have a lot of resources. If you're a church plant or a yeah, small church, yeah. we don't have a lot of resources. Or even as a family unit, you're trying to Absolutely. think, how do I shepherd my family? How do I? It's free, man, and it's yeah. good stuff. So go get on it. TraceTheThemes.com. So, Joe, as we're kind of going through this here, we're, we're on our next one, yeah. Envy. Right. And so looking at some scripture here, uh, Proverbs 14, a tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. Another Proverb 23, mm. let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the fear of the Lord all the day. Mm. Galatians 5, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So as you're, as you're hearing some of these passages, right. like how, how would one define envy? And I, I, again, I know there's always overlap in all yeah. these, but how, how would you best define that? I know that I mostly see envy when I see people looking at me. That's usually when I encounter envy. People are looking at me and they are envious. No, no, no that's me. called disdain. They, is that wait? It's not envy. No, no, that's disdain. I thought it was envy. No, no, you're you're once again uh, prideful, yeah. deceiving yourself. Oh, uh, and you need to uh, work on that, brother. Okay, I, I will do that. So envy, when it comes down to envy, what we're talking about is again, it, it's the idea of discontent. Yeah. Right. But it, this in this context, envy is usually thought of as as a kind of resentment. A built-in mm. resentment about what someone else has, their possessions, their qualities, um, their status. You look at what they have and you feel resentment. So sometimes people will say like, well, it's the desire to take what somebody else has. I don't think that's what it is because I know people that that don't have that desire, but they're, they're still uh, envious. envious. Yeah. So it's not, it's not necessarily I want to take what they have, but it is you're resentful that they have it. Mm. They shouldn't have it. Mm. I don't want to take it from them. Why do they have it and I don't? Now, I remember – Or not even that. Not even why I have it. Why do they? Why do also they have get it too? It? Yeah. yeah, but I, but it includes that sense of longing for it. So I'm not sure. But I, I, like I know, like we had we had a guy here, a good man. He's in ministry now. He's a pastor, a good friend of ours. And for a long time, he was a single dude. And I won't name his. I won't tell you his name, but it's Tim Smith. <laughs> and um, so Tim, I was actually about to say, yeah. yeah, don't 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 say his name. Tim won't like that. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Tim, a good man, godly man, faithful man, mm-hmm. disciplined man. Kept his life you know, pure sexually, mm-hmm. he's disciplined. You know, I went to school Jesus. with him. Yeah. Yeah, we went to uh, middle school together. Yep. He used to, he had a rat tail. I heard about this. Oh, it was an ugly rat tail. Yeah, well, what rat tail is it? That's a little redundant, Jimmy. <laughs> it was <laughs> an ugly rat tail and had a jean jacket. Yeah. Well, the jean jacket's okay. Nah, no, it wasn't. I like a jean not, jacket. Not with that. Oh, no. yeah. No. It was like acid wash jean jacket. Oh, yeah. That's not so good. <laughs> so, um, Tim would say, man, you know, I'm like 30 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm faithful to the Lord. Not, he wouldn't brag. I'm just saying, like, I'm not, I'm not pursuing women in an mm-hmm. immoral way. I'm not sleeping with girls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even though I'm like any other guy, I have those yeah, those built in desires. But I'm following the Lord. Yeah, I'm trying to follow. And I see guys that are getting married that are, you know, that are not great guys that are not, you know, good to their wives. How come I can't find a woman? Yeah. Why can't? Yeah. None of them are Tim Smith level. <laughs> <laughs> so I think even Tim would say, yeah, at, at times in his life he struggled with envy. It wasn't that he wanted to take what somebody else had. It was like. He was he was he just wanted for himself, and yeah. he was frustrated that this guy had it, and he didn't even care about and it's it. It's a good longing, right? Like it's a good longing to have. Oftentimes, yes. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that the, that the desire in and of itself is bad, but it it is it is dissatisfaction with what you have and a a disdain for what other people have, a resentment for what other people have. Uh, I think that's probably the way to talk about envy. And I think the reason this sin is appealing is because it it does stroke the ego pretty good. Like, yeah, you should have that. You do deserve that. Mm-hmm. Why don't you have that? Yeah. Um, that guy doesn't. Well, that chump doesn't even know what he's doing over there. Um, so I think I think that's a part of why it's appealing. But Jimmy, if, if if envy is the 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 vice, what is the virtue here? Yeah, and I would I would say it's generosity. And, oh yeah. But I think what we're like when we're using that word, I think we're talking about like. Uh, like kindness, mm-hmm. right? Uh, being kind to others, being gracious with others, being uh, generous yeah. with others. Like not clinging on and holding on or reaching out for what you can get for yourself, but giving away. Giving to away, others. yes, absolutely. And probably contentment is probably in there too, you know. Yeah. But I, I, I think, I think you're right. I think that's that is more of the opposite because I think with envy, it is this this um, resentment for what somebody else has. Yeah. And so instead of being thankful that they have it. Right. Like, okay, I don't have it. I want it. Praise God though. 
that that individual has yeah. it as well. You know well. how many times I, I've seen this with pastors? I've seen pastors. Oh, we're going to talk about church uh, church buildings, church size. Go oh, ahead. Oh, goodness. Sakes. I knew it. I knew you were going to go as soon as you said pastor. So, like, you know, there's I, years ago, um, our friend Ryan Hughley. Mm. They, yeah, they, Hulkley, yep. they, they, they Huggy. They, uh, My Huggy hug, Hugsy. Um, Ryan and his team planted Redemption Bible Church. It's a yep. great church. Great I love church. that church. Arlington Heights. Still Fantastic. rolling yep. with, uh, now with uh, Ashley Herr yeah, in he, there. He's very pretty, yep. Yeah, I know. It's it, it's Ashley Herr. Two girl sort of names, words, right? Ashley and Herr. Um, but it, he's a dude. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty still, dude, but nonetheless. He is a good looking dude. Yeah. So, um, planted this church and I remember they finally got their offices and they built the office space. They were renting out, you know, a place for worship, but they built the office space and they did a really nice job, you know, set it up to look good. It's all Ikea and stuff like that, but it looked really nice. They put like these things on the walls. Yeah. And I had other pastors confessing, like, I hate going in there because I get so jealous. I get so frustrated at like how nice it is. And I like, Oh, and I, I, I just have a hard, listen, I have plenty of sins. I, I had a hard time understanding, like, why wouldn't you just rejoice with this guy who's yeah. doing well? Yeah. They're a year in and they're like, pra- they're- yeah, praise God that they've, they've managed their finances well, that yes. God was gracious enough and given them the finance. I mean, they went to Ikea, guys. Yeah. I like Ikea. Yeah. Ikea's good. Okay. Okay. So, I'm yeah, sorry, they- Jimmy. We can't all shop at like, where? Uh, where? But, where? I don't know. Where? But, where? Ashley Home where? Furniture, wherever you shop. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And, and I have shopped there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, 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 and like envy, right? Just to, yeah. just to connect this back to the gospel. And we go back to that passage uh, in Philippians where Jesus not, did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, humbled himself, uh, and became obedient to the point of death on a cross. And Jesus saves us from our envy mm-hmm. by demonstrating to us his generosity and his kindness. That's right. All right. What's oh, next? Great. Gluttony. 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 So, Joe, how would you define gluttony and why would you define it as overindulgence <laughs> <laughs> well that's what it is so i guess i don't have to define it yeah i i, I would I, I would say that gluttony is definitely overindulgence and i mean think oftentimes we think of of food i mean i think of that uh right uh from hunger game remember that that one scene at the party in the city you remember, remember that yeah and then you know people are eating it and then they're taking some special juice so they could Ipecac. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of so, a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So they could vomit it back up so they can go back for more. Yeah. And you know, it really when, gluttony is like envy as it relates to food or drink. Okay. Like that's kind of what it is, or it's, mm. it's definitely greed as it, not envy. It's like greed as it re- relates to food and drink. It might be a way to, to think about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, just this, this, this taking in, um, of, of, of too much. Right. So like the, 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 com- the competing ideas here, like gluttony, so gluttony would be the, the category sin, and then drunkenness would be a subcategory mm, uh, job, yeah. of gluttony. So uh, the, the contrast to gluttony is not abstinence. Uh, the, the contrast to the, the vice of gluttony is the virtue of temperance. So what's the difference when you just... So what's gluttony, the is the, gluttony is the overindulgence of a good gift, and temperance is the right use of a good gift. It's not the non-use of a good gift. It's the right use. No, I understand that, but what's the difference between temperance and self-control? Self-control? Yeah. Um, well, I think temperance generally relates to... Like moderation? The, yeah, the intake, use, and moderation of okay. something. Where self-control is... I think temperance would be a subcategory under self-control. Gotcha, gotcha. That's kind of okay. how I would think about it. So, um, See, we think these things through, y'all. Now, when you're, when you're looking at um, at Scripture, of course, the Proverbs have a lot to say about this. Proverbs oh, yeah. 23, 21, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and slumber will clothe them with rags. Mm-hmm. Um, a really uh, upheaving one, you know, uh, Proverbs 23, put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite. Yeah, yeah right, just before that, right. So, um, Let's, uh, Proverbs 25, if you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit. I like some honey. You like some honey? I do. Uh, you know what? Uh, how about this one? Psalm 78. Mm-hmm. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. Yeah. And so, you know, this, this, this idea of gluttony, on one level, it's just self-satisfaction, greed. It's just self-indulgence, overindulgence. But on a deeper level, it is... It is not appreciating the gift that God gives. Yeah. You can't appreciate it if you are overindulging, right? Mm-hmm. If, once you begin to abuse the, the early gift. Yeah, you uh, use the gift. Wait, right. You lose the gift. And you, you, what, what happens is uh, when, you, when you overuse the gift and lose the gift, you lose the giver of the gift. 
That's what I'm saying. Like, oh. Because you've lost sight. That's what mm. it means. You've lost sight of the giver uh, when, when you're indulging in gluttony. And the reason this sin is appealing, whether it's drunkenness or food, is like multi-leveled, right? It's appealing because it feels good. Like most, most people understand that when I'm depressed and I eat, I feel a little bit better. Or when mm-hmm. I'm sad and I drink, I feel a little bit better. Um, and so they get themselves into trouble by doing those sorts of things. And then they view the, instead of, instead of eating and drinking to the glory of God, yeah, right? First Corinthians yep. 10 31, instead of doing that, they are eating and drinking to um, satisfy their own uh, internal cravings. And it, it, it removes God from the picture mm. and it makes us view these gifts either as purely utilitarian, right? They're just designed to to meet a need in my life, whatever that need is. Um, Or we view them as something that we deserve and we just get to use how we want. But like Calvin said, um, when you receive good gifts from the Lord as gifts from the Lord, you won't neglect it and you won't abuse it. You'll treat it with care Mm. and you'll do what's right. Mm. So temperance then is the right use. C.S. Lewis talks about this issue of temperance in mere Christianity. Uh, it's the right use of the gift, not abusing it. Yeah. And again, you know, Jesus models this for us in his eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners. Um, he never got drunk, though he drank wine. He was never gluttonous, uh, but instead he rightly used the gifts of God. And so he saves us from our intemperance uh, by his temperance, by his act of righteousness. Yeah. And he shows us the way that we are supposed to go. So, Joe, next, we're almost there. Wrath. Wrath. Your favorite to one. Wrath. Yeah. So, That's, Joe, um, if what? I was to define wrath, mm. can we put a definition of wrath on uh, on the show notes? Maybe just a photo of you. Well, I don't know if my photo pops up with uh, with the with the definition. You have to look it up. I don't think it does. I, I think it does. All right, we'll see. Oh, I'm pretty sure we'll it does. See. So, uh, so what is wrath, Jimmy? Mild annoyance. Uh, mild. mild annoyance. Is that what it is? No, I think it's more than that. Really? Yeah, no, I, like, think, I think it's. Uh, 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 oh, I can't use that word. Ooh. What word is that? I was going to say like unjust anger, but then I was thinking like the wrath of God, which is oh, yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's like the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, definitely the, the sin of wrath though, you said you, you could say maybe is unjust anger. Unjust, uh, yeah. Unjust anger. Um, it is not just anger, though. I mean, wrath it's like is unhinged. It's like yeah, unhinged is good. It's like it's amped up. Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, it's an extreme unrefrained, maybe the, right, yeah. unrestrained, unrestrained. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's definitely what it is. Um, it is unrighteous anger, probably mm-hmm. to just say it most simply. And uh, when, when you look in scripture, uh, the the if, if you just like Google wrath. Um, yeah. You're, you're going to see a lot of the yeah. wrath of God. Psalm 37. But you yeah. also see it like this in Psalm yeah. 37. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. Right. Yeah, that's right. James one twenty. For the anger yep. of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Um, be angry and do not sin. Mm. Ephesians 4.26. So you know, we have a, we have a lot of, of passages in Scripture that warn us about being a people of wrath. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that all anger is wrong. There's a, there's a place for... Like this whole... Like uh, this whole Kavanaugh situation, yeah, like yeah. everybody's freaking out about uh, Judge Kavanaugh, who was appointed by Trump to the Supreme Court. And now we have three people as of today, three people that have come out and made accusations. Um, the first accus. Let me let's just say this, by, by the way. Oh, okay. if here, somebody here, here comes some, if, uh, so, if somebody makes an accusation like this, mm-hmm. I don't believe or disbelieve them, but I take their accusation very seriously. And you've got whoa, to investigate Joe, it. Whoa, whoa, I, whoa. I, you don't, I can't believe Joe, or disbelieve. Joe, stop that. What do you mean? No, you got to stop. Stop what? Chuck Schumer has said, you Who cannot did? presume innocence upon this individual. Oh, yes, right. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's listen. I, I, I. I think everybody's, but even just about this, like I would take any accusation very seriously. Mm-hmm. If one of our elders or one of our members was accused of this, um, I don't believe the accuser immediately, but I don't disbelieve them either. I don't discount them. I go, whoa, this is a very serious, let's, let's investigate, investigate, let's check this, it out. Yeah. Um, and then once I have evidence, then I can either say, oh, they were telling the truth. Like we got to, we got to now do something yeah, about yeah. it. And that person's innocence has now been proven to be false. Um, but we, we've got three people that have made these accusations. And one, first one offered no evidence. Second one was kind of weird. But the third one that just came out has has really been, I mean, listen, it, let me put it this way. If these accusations are true, if any of them are true, um, and especially this last one, if that's true, um, I'm going to be righteously angry. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be really righteously angry. I'm angry about the idea of it, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. But 
I, 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 I don't, I'm not involved, so I just got to wait and see what the... What Here's the, the part I don't understand in this. Okay. The dude kept his calendar for those months. That is weird. From 1982. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking at Joe's calendar. I see, I keep mine from 2017. It's right up there on the wall. No, Jimmy, from my calendar, what could they learn from my life if they look at my 2017 calendar? If they look at, if they look calendar, at your like, 2017 calendar, yeah. uh, you did nothing there's all year. Blank. <laughs> <laughs> there's no beach. There's no beach week on there. <laughs> <laughs> What's even better is he had a 2016 up there that was actually, you had some stuff yeah, on there. Yeah. And then we started making fun of you in April of 17. Yeah. And then you went and got this replaced and then and you then, never used it. No. And we're how far into 18? Early. I think it's still early still enough. Early? I could still, you know, are, are we down at the end of September? Yeah. yeah it's early. <laughs> so yeah, it was a, it was a, it's a weird thing, but I, we can be righteously angry about things. Okay. That's my, that's, that's my point. Mm-hmm. But wrath is this unhinged. Yeah. Um, you know, anger directed at people and it manifests itself in all kinds of ways. It doesn't have to be murder, but murder is one of those ways. Yeah. It could be violence. It can be vindic- vindic- vindictive speech. Um, uh, wrath probably does need to be manifested. I don't know if wrath can just be an internal issue. It'd be an interesting well, discussion. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Could you, could you store up wrath in your heart towards an individual? Wouldn't that just be anger? Yeah, I don't know. I don't well, know. Maybe I, you could. Maybe you could have an unhinged anger. Then it's not unhinged. What do you mean? Unhinged is like flinging around. Yeah, in inner turmoil. No. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I think I'm gonna say Hashtag wrath. Joe no. Wrath is man. Joe knows uh, <laughs> with a K N O W. Uh, I think I think wrath is a, is is a manifestation of unrighteous anger. That's what I'm gonna say. But I could be. I totally could be yeah. wrong. So then the opposite side of that, then Joe, if we're talking about wrath being you know unhinged, right, uh, and it's manifested anger. What uh, justified anger? Yeah, <laughs> justified. that's the only kind of anger I have. Oh. No, I'm gonna, I mean, I, I would say if wrath is the um, vice, then I would say long suffering or patience mm. would be the virtue. Because the, the reason wrath is appealing is because it, 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 it's it's us meeting out justice. It's us, um, you know, taking things into our own hands. That's it, right. We've been treated quote unquote unfairly. Oh yeah, and are retaliating for that. I mean, right. you're talking about like you said, patience, long suffering. Uh, looking at Romans 12, rejoice in hope, mm-hmm. be patient in tribulation, right. be constant in prayer. Right. Uh, Romans eight twenty five. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Right. And like Axel Rose said from Guns N' Roses, all we need is a little patience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, 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 great, <laughs> the great Bishop Rose. <laughs> the right Reverend Rose. The right Reverend Rose. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. So listen, last one. Let's just get to it. Let's get to if it. If you're examining yourself and you're looking at these sins, mm-hmm. one or more of them is more than likely going to be an issue that you really need to deal with in repentance. The last uh, of the seven deadly is sloth. Uh, Jimmy, mm. what's sloth? Laziness. Or? What? Slothness. Or? I, I Goonies? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here like, how am I missing? Hey, you <laughs> There it is. That's what I was waiting for. We're usually so on the same page. I know. And it took me a moment. I'm like, what? Huh? Huh? All right. So what did you say sloth was? Laziness. Laziness, right? Laziness. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. It is laziness. Uh, you know, it it's oftentimes stems from a, a sense of, of entitlement. Um, you know, sloth is not the consequence of being tired. No, no. Okay. It's like, I think one of the Proverbs talks about like a sloth, like puts his hand in the bowl, but doesn't, but doesn't bring it up to eat. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Ugh." laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, the sluggard says there's a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets because they don't want to go work. Right. Whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. A uh, slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Love not sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes and you will have plenty of bread. So get to work. Don't be lazy. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, it's not just vocation. Take care of your house, everything. Right, everything, right? It's like, um, and again, we understand that people are tired and we need rest. That, that's important. Mm-hmm. But sloth is is irresponsibility. It's yeah. not taking seriously the work that God has given you to do. I love it. It's one of the things that my wife says, that the good works that God has prepared for you to walk in is not just reading your Bible and praying and going to church. It is also doing the laundry, doing your homework. It's also you know, uh, helping your spouse. It's, um, it, it's, it's all the little things that we have to do. No, she didn't say that. According to Rick, it was Luther. Oh, did Luther say that? Luther said yeah. that. Yeah, now Rick likes to attribute everything to Luther and not give credit where credit is due. Makes me so wrathful because he's so slothful. 
Do your research, Rick. Um, <laughs> Love you. I hope you guys come back up. So this sin is appealing because... Because we lazy. You yeah. just get to lounge around, do nothing, just right. chill. Now, there are some people that you know genu- genuinely aren't slothful. They're, they're just... They're workaholics, and there are different sin issues in their lives. Yeah, that's, that's a whole so different we're not issue. all going to be guilty of all of these sins, but most of these can be seen in each of our lives in different ways or at different times. Mm-hmm. So if sloth is laziness, the virtue would be? Uh, I would say be hardworking. Right, yeah. And I, the Bible actually does talk about that sort of a thing, Colossians 3.23, whatever mm-hmm. you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Mm. Uh, that's, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty clear that, that the Old Testament and the New Testament values people who take their vocation and their responsibi- responsibilities serious enough to actually do hard work and yeah. hard things because we're not just doing them for ourselves or even for the people that are important to us or even for our employers. We ultimately do these things for God. Oh, absolutely. He's put them before us. Mm -hmm. So all of this to say, if we're looking at our spiritual lives, and so this is just one little part of some of the stuff that Jimmy and I have been talking about as we look at how do you reignite a spiritual fervor for yourself, is it takes um, a a level of self-examination and the consideration of our sins to get clarity on, on how desperately we need the grace of God. Like, it's hard to meditate on the gospel and really appreciate it if you don't understand your sin and your need. That's right. And this is a way to begin to uh, meditate on yourself, which should then lead us to meditate on Christ. So that, back to that Luther quote, right? Mm -hmm. When I look at myself, I can't see, you know, how I could be saved. But when I look at Jesus, I can't imagine how I could be lost. Yeah, yeah. it's it's got to be both. You look at yourself, you see your need, and then you look to Christ, and, and you, you see begin. your hope. So, and I think so. When you're saying like, "Oh man, the, the the scripture is cold. God seems distant. My prayers seem like they're bouncing mm-hmm. off the ceiling." When you when you're feeling that way, yeah. When you feel all Katy Perry, why? What did she say? Oh, you're hot or you're cold. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wait, you're yes and then you're no. But hot and cold is fine. It's lukewarm that's bad. See, she wrong. You're in and you're out. Okay, so. I think we, one of the things that we can do, one of the things, there's a lot of things, one of the things we can do is uh, take inventory, mm-hmm. consider our sins, see how Christ meets us in the midst of those sins, saves us from those sins, right. and leads us out of those sins uh, with, his, with his example, right? Yep. We'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctor and Devotion. You can head to the website, drdevotion.com, that you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, jofostore.com, and by grab the way, by the some way. gear. Okay. A couple of you uh, knuckleheads don't know how to spell Jofo. What do you mean? They're uh, putting Fojo? They're putting in J-O-E-F-O or something like that. Oh, and they no. like the URL doesn't work. Jofo is spelled J-O-F-O. Jofo. Jofo. JoFoStore. JoFoStore.com. So that's how you, and you know what? If you can't spell it, we don't want you buying it. We don't want your money. No, no, no. JoFoStore.com. J-O-F-O. Yeah, store.com. All right. Uh, so big thanks to uh, Zondervan uh, for sponsoring for mm-hmm. this month. Uh, we definitely yep. appreciate it. Make sure you stuff. Uh, take like a look that. at Tracing the Themes. TracingTheThemes.com. Dot com. And Get that free Bible study. Yeah, and, and take a look, look at the NIV. The NIV. Biblical, Biblical Theology, theology study, study Bible, Bible. Yeah, from Zondervan. Mm-hmm, it's like got that. 28 new articles, the same great notes. Yep. Right? The Zondervan Notes. The Zondervan Notes. It's, uh, it, it looks really good. That's a, that's a weighty Bible. Yeah, it's big. That's big. That's, yeah. a, that's chock full of stuff. Really good for study, I think. Uh, Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog mm-hmm. post on Wednesday. Hey, hey, blog content. post on hold right now. On hold, but you know, yeah, uh, long just, video content. Yeah. It's coming later. soon, though. It's coming later. soon. Okay, bye. Yeah, just, yeah. Wait, are we going to hang out? Let's no. hang out. No, I'm going. Well, I thought we got to. No, I'll see you later. Bye. No, bye. Bye.